Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated podcast. I am your dungeon master. My name is Anthony Reed. This is episode 74. It's part of the Oracle story arc, and I want to give a big shout out to the patrons at patreon.com slash adventure inc. Thank you to the patrons. Thank you for your support. Thank you for backing the show. Thank you for being a part of this community, and you can be a part of this community too, not only by going to adventureinkpod.com, well, sorry, I guess not by not only by going to patreon.com slash adventureink, but also by going to adventureinkpod.com and joining the Discord. You might say to yourself, um, uh, self, Anthony's not listening, so I'll just talk to you. And yourself will say, yeah, that'll show him. And then you'll say, hey, I don't really know what Discord is. And then your inner monologue, which has picked this up at some point, you know, just in, in passing, has will tell you, hey man, it's a chat room, basically. Just come hang out in this chat room with us. That's all I'm asking. It's not in a weird way. It's not like the 90s. Even in the 90s, some people used chat rooms effectively, I'm sure. Anyway, come hang out with us and the Discord. Uh, be a part of our community. Be a part of our world. And uh, thank you again to the patrons for supporting the show. You guys are the best. Let's get started. Nobles and farmers, knights and scoundrels, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Bill Roth, the ranger. She's a grimalkin, that's, uh, but that's understood. No pets allowed, even though she's not a pet. I will wait outside. Everyone, if anyone needs anything, I am outside. Scarpin, the cleric. Should I just try and snipe them from over here? Yeah, okay. I did say they were as good as dead. I would hate for, for my, you know, to break my word on our first contract as Adventure Incorporated. Ellery, the bard. We would want you to leave this warehouse. He points behind him. Mm-hmm. Church! Oh, sorry. We want you to leave this church. Deerin, the wizard. He say you no worship Shattered Fang. Yeah, man, he's, like, super wrong. We love Broken Tooth, uh, Shattered Fang, man. Prepare yourselves, for these are the tales of Adventure Incorporated. So, yeah, uh, you are face-to-face with Archimedes Silverblade, and he says, Dear and Lincoln, I need your help. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, what can I help you with? Um, you are this dear in Lincoln, yes? And he drops onto the table a paper that you wrote when you were in prosperity. Uh, both ding- both Deerins wrote while you were in prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about it's my deep constant. magics. Yeah, it's, it, this is like before the inflection point, yeah, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, this was from your avant-garde esoteric uh, course of study uh, that you were turned away from, but this was a paper you wrote before that point, uh, which is on the deep magics. Uh, Deeran looks around. Uh, he stands up. He like runs out into the hallway. He does a quick look around in the hallway. He shuts <laughs> the door behind him, and he says, yeah, step into my office, uh, and he gestures to the closet. Uh, he says, uh, Deeran, that is a closet. Uh, Deeran opens the closet door uh, in the hut. Ah. <laughs> yes, I uh, appreciate that. But I think perhaps we would be more ser- better served if we step into somewhere a little more secure. Uh, follow me? Yeah, of course. And he opens the door to your office, which opens into a different hut uh, <laughs> that he has prepared. <laughs> Touche, man. Uh, yeah, and Deeran <laughs> steps in. Oh, uh, uh, and he sh- before you close that, uh, Deeran runs out of the the hut, back into his office, back into his hut, uh, grabs a couple <laughs> of sandwiches, and then slams the door behind <laughs> him, jumps into the new hut, and he's like, just in case, you know. He shuts the door behind you, and it just like seals away like a wall now. Um and this this is uh, this hut is decorated with like it's got a lot of hanging like crystals and and floating crystals like all around the room. It's a little cold in its uh, presentation. The colors are all very dark and like, uh, but not like an inviting dark. 
and he sits you down on a chair and he says, uh, I have uh, very pressing questions I have for you, as you have done some amount of research into this. I'm hoping you may be able to answer some things that we have been uh, coming up short on. I was very impressed with the paper you wrote. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was kind of like a... My early days, like before uh, I, I really started taking research uh, and, and um, you know, uh, the politics of the, the, the academia uh, a bit more seriously. Uh, but I would definitely say it's a passion project of mine and, and something that I like, uh, you know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty still into. <clears throat> Do you know what this is? And he reaches uh, into his like into a, like basically a pouch at his uh, waist and then like reaches a little deeper than the pouch is right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and pulls from it a large, uh, almost like a basketball sized glass orb swirling with black miasma. Uh, and he places it on the table in front of him. And so I have the memories of me and real like deer and prime, right? Correct. Yeah, you, I, I, no, uh, not exactly, but it does remind me of, so, okay, we were on, uh, this is going to sound crazy. I was on the elemental plane of fire, uh, and there was something very similar to this that held a lot of energy inside of it. Uh, when I touched it, I, I became imbued with that power, um, but not like this me. He, I, he looks at you, it narrows his eyes, and then uh, you see him like raise up his hand and, and run it in the air ahead of you, and a bunch of runes appear in the air in front of you, and he uh, runs a finger between them, like connecting some of the runes and drawing a few extras in the air. Uh, it seems to be almost doing like calculations with these runes, um, and then he pushes it forward, and it like washes over you. And he says, interesting. I do not see what you are talking about. From what I can tell, you have never been on the elemental plane of fire. But I can see that there are memories in you that do not belong to you. That makes sense. Because uh, this body hasn't, like, hasn't been there. You know what I mean, man? Like, I'm connected to uh, the mentality of the body that has been there. And so I wonder, so that makes, like, elemental magic, like, purely physical? Anyway, like, um, Deeran realizes he's rambling, and he goes, um, so if you brought me a thing about deep magics, and then you ask me about this, like, this must be shadow, right? Like, this must be some sort of collection of shadow magic, like, stored inside a thing? This is a piece of pure shadow magic that we believe has come from the elemental plane of shadow. There are some members of, I will say, highly placed individual who happens to have roots within that plane. She has long, she comes from a long line of people who once made their home on the plane of shadow. Wait, people live there? No longer do they live there, but they did once. But like, all the, the research, like, I mean, it, calling it research is generous uh, compared to uh, you know, there, there's not a lot of primary sources out there around this stuff, you know, uh, so a lot of it was secondary and tertiary sources that, like, I cobbled together, and, like, because of time periods, I was able to really kind of draw them all. Uh, it sounded to me like Shadow destroys everything uh, that it touches, and so how could someone survive on a plane that did nothing but destroy or overwrite or... Yes, interesting word choice here. You see, uh, shadow does not destroy, of course. It overwrites, it changes. It 
In a way, I think all of the deep magics are about change. They are about progress. The way that shadow changes, certainly it leaves one shadowed in their own way. I don't know how familiar you are with the races of elves, but it is the Shadar Kai who once lived in that realm. They are elves from this world who have been overwritten by shadow. That change is permanent in them. And it is that connection that allows them to draw from the ele from the plane of shadow itself directly here. Now, I have not been able to access the plane itself, and this fragment is the only thing I've been able to get to, to come through that connection, and it was arduous to make that happen. You mention the elemental plane of fire. That is in part one of the things I am hoping will come to fruition soon. Uh, a plan in place. But I have not seen results from that yet. Um, have you been there? I have. Okay. Uh, I, so, oh boy. Um, okay. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't, I really wish I had paid more attention in divination, uh, classes, but okay. Um, listen, the question I have for you is, did you meet a guy, a uh, really nice guy talks inside your brain, has one of these, like, uh, like a tentacle mouth? Ah, you speak of the guardians of the elemental planes, or the planes of magic in general. Sure, yeah, uh, that sounds right. Uh, he definitely, like, lived on the elemental plane uh, of fire. Uh, he was pretty upset in, in my world. Uh, he was pretty upset that someone had come and built some towers uh, that were siphoning power uh, because, in his words... Uh, it was going to destabilize the plane uh, and it, like tear a gigantic hole in the material world. Um, so like, have you, have you done that part already here? Is that a thing? The guardians tend to be hyperbolic in their concerns. I appreciate that that is their role to play they have one purpose one function and they cannot see the bigger picture beyond that function to him i believe he would see them as a destabilizing force but that is because he can only see the plane of fire he does not understand all of the other machinations at play mm. oh, uh. I bring this up, Deren. I come to you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, back to... Because I, I don't think... This isn't... Oh, what's up, man? I believe that we have been deceived. That we have been lied to. By the very fabric of nature and reality itself. These deep magics are incomplete and i think i can prove that they are incomplete and i think with your help i think we can prove beyond any doubt using this he points at the orb incomplete in like what way like you think... The deep magics have purposes. 
that they serve. And I th believe that there are magics out there capable of more than just what we know of the deep magics. Okay. All are about change. And there are many ways one can change. And if we can harness this change, harness it for our purposes, I think we can do amazing things. I have an associate I've been working with who has been working on this problem for a very long time. Longer even than I have been aware of this issue. He is afforded that, of course, by his heritage as an elf. But I think that uh, with your help, we may be able to make a sort of magical breakthrough unknown to this plane. Well, I'm listening, man. We will take this. You and I, and we will meet my associate, where we have uh, set up a certain ritual. We want to use this orb to try and uh, use some of the shadow power within it to see if we can... That is the one fundamental force that is underrepresented in our modern world. And if we can use that to stretch our understanding, to see beyond, perhaps there is some value in that. I'm not sure I understand. So I don't want to tell you too much as I fear that if uh, some of it, you probably just have to see to understand. And I think beyond that, I, d I do not want to, uh, if you are disinclined to help, I do not want to share too much with you. Uh, Deeran looks around the room. And he remembers the oracle's words, uh, and he internal him, dear and prime, forces him to say, man, you know I'm in. He, uh, Archimedes smiles. Yeah, uh, when, he's, when Deeran sees Archimedes smile, he goes, you know, this isn't the first time we've worked together. Uh, like, you sent us back in time. Where I'm, where I'm also from. Hmm. I got the God's eye to work, did I? Well, sort of, uh, because, like, you threw away our bodies because you thought we died. Uh, but we didn't. We came back, uh, and then we're alive. Um, it was, it was wild, man. Well... Good to know. Adir and I am excited to share this with you, but again, I must ask your discretion on what you will see. Yeah, I think word, that there man. is a there is a potential here for us to all become the experts in this. Um, Deeran like has a moment of pause. Because, like, that's not at all what Deeran Prime wants to become. Uh, but it is 100% what this version of Deeran wants. And so he, like, has this confliction, this conflicted moment. Uh, um Okay, uh, I I think I just I just want to know. He stands up and he uh, moves across to the other side of his little hut here, and he uh, pushes open the wall there that uh, opens into a doorway uh, that leads out into the darkness. And he says, "Then follow me." And he steps through. Yeah, Duran follows. Uh, on the other side, uh, you find yourself um, standing beside the Demon Stone uh, in the Demon Isles. 
And staring up at the demon stone in front of you uh, is Wesley Tallow. And you see as uh, Archimedes Silverblade says, please meet my associate, Wesley. And Wesley turns and he says, it's very nice to meet you. You are this deer in Lincoln, yes? Yeah, man. How have you been? I have uh, been quite well. Hey, what's today's date? <laughs> uh, yeah, so they, uh, I don't have like the date uh, right, right, right. established, right? But uh, doing some mental math, um, you determine, yeah, that basically we're a, a little time before the uh tessa got together like well not that you got together but before our uh adventure began yeah cool uh the demon stone in front of you uh whole and intact with several gems embedded within the stone uh the light of them very dim uh but present uh, in the uh, as they they glow slightly in front of you. Um. We're not gonna do what what I think we're gonna do, are we? You guys. Wesley says, "I think we can. Fi- this process should give us uh, a step closer to finding a solution for the fading." You told him that that is what we are doing, yes? We are here about the fading? And Archimedes waves a hand and he says, Yes, yes, we will find your solution to the fading, I have no doubt. This is about discovery. It is about understanding. And it is about the deep magics. That is what I have told Deeran. We... Uh, uh... So... What happens behind this is pretty important. Like this, we re okay. So Archimedes, you already uh, checked me out for uh, the truthiness of what I'm about to say, and so like I don't mind saying it again. But if we destroy this, uh, like. That's what caused a really bad problem in my world. What kind of problem? Uh, we freed a whole bunch of demons uh, from a pit who are now, like, trying to take over the world. They glance at each other. Uh, and then Wesley says, tell me more about these demons. Well, their power. What kind of magic do they use? It's this magic called destruction. So it is a deep magic. So that's what I'm trying to figure out, man, because I'm like, I'm not 100% sure because there's creation magic and destruction magic that also kind of work against each other. Uh, And I can't like place it appropriately in the hierarchy yet, right? I've got some ideas. I like, I think they might be maybe, I don't know, man, like, what if they're a level beyond the deep magics, right? Like the deep magics uh, do these changes that, you know, like I theorized, uh, and it sounds like you, you guys are backing me up on that. Um, like what if this creation and destruction magic are kind of the purest forms of that, uh, and they live kind of in a hierarchical tier above the deep or below the deep magics, like kind of a, you know, like a pyramid shape and Deeran draws it out on the ground. Uh, this, like this concept that he's been like riffing on in notebooks, uh, over the past couple of years, like, um, you speak of this creation magic. You talk of Titanic magic. Yeah. Hi knew this he turns to wesley i told you there is another of these powers here if we can harness this power one of destruction surely we can destroy whatever blockages have have been created to keep our memories locked away when the fading comes so like that's the thing man like they they uh the titans 
God, I sound like a crazy person. The Titans told us that like, no, it wasn't the Titans. It was the voice of creation. Sorry. The voice of creation told us that like using destruction magic, like it's not, there's, it's not like it can't fix anything. I attempted once to speak with the voice of creation, but I did not get far in my endeavor uh, before I chose to back out. Yeah, that makes sense, man. Uh, I definitely would have also chickened out, but um, one of the members of my party, there's something special about her. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know that anyone that I travel with knows how lucky we are to have her. Okay. Uh, The important part of this, though, is that the voice of creation is a titanic creation. It would, of course, oppose any sort of magic that was rooted differently than itself. I don't think that you can reliably take its word for how this magic could be used, as it, I'm sure, cannot conceive of a way that such magic could be used effectively. But we, Diren, we can. We can think through better options for this. We can look at the uh, concept of destruction and understand its value and its worth. Man, like, I hear uh, a lot of uh, words that, like, I've probably... Not even, you know, not even a year ago, I would have been so on board with. Um, Like, conceptually, all of this makes so much sense. But in practice, I've met some of these demons. Man, like, the only way to really, like, open up uh, a path forward with them is through creating a bond and not destroying them. Uh, Like, the destruction just kind of postpones a problem for later, and it's probably going to be worse when we get around to it. But, like, finding out a creative, uh, positive, creation-based solution has been the only thing that's, like, kept them from destroying everything. So let me ask you this. If the Titans reemerged on this world and they created for it a cage, sealed us inside of it, what do you think the best tool in our disposal would be to regain our freedom? Man. Understanding? Understanding? A prison? No, understanding I think you are right. I think you are right that when dealing with creatures of destruction, you have found a way to deal with them. That is through the creation of bonds. But should we ever face a threat of creation, it will not be creation that frees us from it, if your diagram is correct. That is what I fear. Well, I think for to a problem that we have not yet faced, but one that we easily could, and if we are not prepared with the tools we need. Wesley shakes his head. He says, none of that matters if we cannot solve the fundamental problem that keeps us in the dark. There are so many things that we all have known and we all have lost because of the fading. If we do not find a way to regain those memories, then none of this matters. We have had this conversation, Silverblade, and I know you do not necessarily agree with me, but that is because you are human, and you have not experienced what I have experienced. Three lifetimes I have lost to the fading. Three lifetimes of knowledge, of understanding, 
and I am one person. There are so many more out there who have lost so much more. That is what we need to solve. And uh, Silverblade says, yes, yes, and perhaps this is our avenue to that. But more importantly, this is a tool that we currently do not have in our toolbox. Deiran, you must understand that. Yeah, and I also understand that, like, when you open this toolbox, a bunch of really bad dudes are going to come out of it and kill <laughs> a whole bunch of people. <laughs> Silverblade listens to your words. He's like nodding his head. You can tell he's thinking. How many people? <laughs> I don't <laughs> honestly man I don't know yet. It could be all of us. We haven't we haven't figured it out. We haven't figured out how to stop it yet. Like we we're trying uh but every step we take closer uh we get a lot closer to dying doing it. And oh god, this sounds so, this sounds like something Belroth would say. Um uh, if we can't do it. I don't know who can. Oh my, what an asshole. I sound like such a jerk. <laughs> I need you to understand, dear, and I don't know. You said that you knew me in your world. I don't know how well you know me. Uh, base um, honestly, basically about the same. Uh, you're you're super closed off. Uh, it's kind of weird, and like you don't let anybody in to like any of your plans, and it's super hard to work with you. Um, it really, honestly, like I, growing up, I had a poster of you in my room. Uh, I had like a a, a, a tower of her eye shaped bed. You you, you know what? I, like I was a real fanboy. Uh, like. And this whole experience is kind of like souring it a little bit because like you, you, they say never meet your heroes. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like now I can tell you that like, because you're not really him, uh, you're just like a different version or whatever. Uh, but like a lot of your traits are similar, man. And like, that's kind of like bumming me out. Uh, I do that. I, I behave that way for a reason, Tyrion. It is because ultimately... In order to save this world, sometimes we have to make choices. Choices that people do not understand, that people would find distasteful. Your warning is not falling on deaf ears. I understand what you have said and the plight that you have put before me, and it has given me pause. But I still need to do this. I still need to understand this magic. And I think if you knew me well enough, you would know that I needed to do this. And that I'm not going to stop. And I don't know how well you know my friend Wesley here. It seems you may have some interaction with him. But he won't either. Um, hey, Wesley, speaking of you, uh, how much spellstone did it take, uh, to get this? Uh, and he points at the shadow orb. <laughs> uh, the, um, silver, uh, silver blade says, ah, he puts a hand forward. He says, Spellstone was not a thing that we could really use for the ritual involved in getting this. It had a heavy cost. Got it. Um. Cool. Uh. 
Oh, cool. All right. Um, Deeran looks around uh, to see any glimpse of Thelvin's like face uh, or the Oracle's face or whoever she is, whoever they are, like uh, to try to like be reassured that like he has to move forward in this. There is no, uh, you do not see the Oracle here. And behind you is the doorway back into the hut, which still exists. Mm-hmm. Um, and in front of you is Silverblade with uh, holding out the orb, Wesley, the Demon Stone, and that's it. Listen, man, uh, I really should have paid more attention in divination class. Uh If you do, if, if this is like some sort of alternate reality situation, I think this one's doomed if you do this. Because I'm not here who I am there. And I can't imagine the rest of us are either. And so without us to stop this, to fix this mistake that you're about to make. We don't uh, survive. And Wesley, where I come from, the fading's still around, man. This doesn't solve that. Uh... He, Wesley, when you say that, like, he stops. He seems to be thinking introspectively. Um, but uh, Archimedes says, you know, it is often I'm told I am the most arrogant one uh, in the room. Seldom have I been told that if it were not for one in front of me that the whole world would be doomed that there is nothing anyone could rise to without them it's it's an impressive level dear and i must say i mean i'm not gonna like start dropping names or whatever but like have you met the green man okay i'm gonna start dropping names like we've met like a lot of like uh, <laughs> like uh, i don't know how to do this man uh if there's a way to stop the fading, it isn't with destruction magic. It's with creation magic. It's building a bridge to get back to the things that we are disconnected from. It's about forging a bond with the past in a way that like helps us understand why it's been taken from us. There's uh, there's just something about this that like feels wrong, man. And Deeran's like pointing at the miasma inside the the orb. This, this is shadow. Shadow is a fundamental force of our world. And you speak of destruction. Perhaps, Deeran, perhaps destruction is too. He, uh, he, like, uh, pulls out a piece of, like, paper, right? And, like, he tucks the orb under his arm and tears the paper. And he throws it to either side. So destruction is a part of who we are. It's a, it's part of us. Then we probably don't need to get it from here. He puts the orb back into his pouch and he looks at the wall. He says, I have found records of this stone, by the way. Old ones. Yeah, it was hundreds of years old. I was there when it was made. These stones are fading, their power is waning. 
they were connected to magic, and the flow of magic now does not flow to them. For now, this stone stands. It will not stand forever. A hundred years? A year? I don't know. The power will fail. This door will open regardless. You say that we use this power against it, and when we do, we damage it, is my understanding. I mean, you tell me. What were you going to do with this stupid thing? This door... Were you going to use it against it and then hope that it broke the door? Well, not break the door, perhaps. Though that is a possibility. My hope would be to use shadow to create a rivulet that we could withdraw power from. This is not a door of shadow. To create a space within this door, a wedge of shadow. To retrieve some of the power. That was my purpose. If it, as you say, the door is Whatever comes from the other side comes through. So be it. But I am saying that will happen regardless. Maybe not today. But there will come a time. This will be unavoidable. Yeah. uh, And you instead could focus on you know, recharging these stones instead of destroying them or uh, any number of other things to use your great intellect on and your incredible resources and your vast amount of creative, like, problem solving. The stuff that they write about about you, man. Like, Hey, roll a die for me. What? You? <laughs> Let's do a persuasion check. These aren't just for building towers. No, not just, huh. but mostly. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, where is my character sheet? Persuasion? I'm not good at that. <laughs> uh, 15. Okay. Hmm. You are sure of this? Yeah. I am disappointed. But perhaps you are right. Perhaps it would be better to know more before we take this step. I'm just saying this one's one you can't come back from. It was my hope to gather information with this. And I suppose that is what I have done in bringing you here. Serendipitous, it seems. I had considered not seeking you out. But it was the... uh, I assumed that as a researcher, you had continued research in your field of study, even if your school had changed. I mean... If you had stepped into my office, I could have shown you, you know, the pet projects, but <laughs> we had to go in yours. Uh, but um, can I give you some advice? Yes. I don't know what she's doing in your world or where she's at. Uh but Ellery Realtonum is the key to creation. The key to creation. When you spoke to the voice, it was she who could walk this path? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Wesley says... You said that the fading is still in place. There is nothing we were able to do to strike against it. 
No. Um, that's, it's, it's, it's the worst, uh, part. Well, the second worst part besides all the demons. Uh, but like that was what drew us all together, uh, as a group, we were trying to like, we were trying to solve the fading for our own reasons, you know, um, all of us have people who have been affected by it. Ellery's grandma, um, God, so many of my professors, uh, Scarpin's whole family, um, just, yeah, um, no. Then I will have to continue to search. I believe that there is an answer out there. I am glad that we did not make a rash decision here that would have distracted from our greater purpose. Archimedes, I am going. I believe it is best if we postpone this for now. But we will keep an eye on the stones. Perhaps charging them is the right decision. If it is possible. And then he just uh, heads, he basically heads away from the portal, like toward where, you know, toward a standing stone. Yeah. As he leaves, like once he's sort of out of earshot, Archimedes turns back to you. Dearin, I appreciate your insight on this. I, Wesley has worked with me many times, but his, he is sort of a singular mind of things. He does not have the grander vision that is so important. As I was saying before, sometimes we must see the big picture. And that is something difficult to impart on someone. There is more happening here. More than just some secret magic locked away for generations that will one day unleash itself. There is more than a fundamental force of shadow which has disappeared from our world. There is a struggle brewing. One between the forces of the deep magics. And I think, Diren, I think that there is something about you that is fundamental to that as well. Yeah, if stuff needs to go to arbitration, I guess I'm the guy. You are like an empty void. Man, everybody said, like... <sighs> you know what? I'm going to start telling everybody I'm an empty void and like being proud of it. Cause like everyone all the time. I need that, Darren. I need what you have. How? That is what I would like to find out. I am offering you an opportunity. Man, are we back on this again? And Deeran gestures at the at the gate. No, for a time okay. being, for the time being, I will let that lie. Instead, I would take you back to the Tower of Varai, and we would discover together what it means for you to be empty of these magics, and how I can. Use that to our advantage or free you of that burden. Let's see what happens. He nods and he says, I must uh, insist that you return home and allow people um, it is not 
well looked upon when someone of your stature simply disappears. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, would be mysterious circumstances, uh, for sure. So make whatever preparations you must, and I will return to you in two days. And I will take you to the tower. Cool. Sounds 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 good, man. Uh, and Diran thinks back to, uh, like, he thinks back to to Halmer telling him he needs to do something, and he thinks back to his friends in the tavern, just like, "Yup," and has set himself to make this decision. Okay, yeah, he takes you back in and uh, opens another doorway that just like leads right through to your, um, uh, back to your office. Uh, and then he says, two days' time, dear, I will return. And he shuts the door. Oh. It's late. Late, late. Man, I should have told him not to blindfold me. Just makes me so stuffy <laughs> in there. <laughs> uh, Deeran pulls out the second sandwich. Uh, eats it. <laughs> and then goes into his hut. <laughs> okay uh the next day comes what preparations are you making uh here at, at home to basically extricate yourself yeah Deeran will clean out the office and by clean out the office i mean pull all of the things from the office and put them in the hut all of the letters, all of the books, all of the notebooks, everything straight into the office uh, or straight from the office into the hut. Uh, he walks into his classroom. Uh, every class starts the same way. Darren puts the book down. He puts his hands up for the, the students to uh, stop talking. And then he says, all right, um, class is over for the semester. Uh, you all did it. Great work. Uh, they all look like real confused. Like maybe you're testing them. And then like, like someone just gets up and leaves. Yeah. Uh, and then as the first person gets up and like heads to the door, uh, man, Great work, Ricky. I knew something would. I knew you would be first at something this year. <laughs> and then slowly, the rest of the students leave. Someone's like, "Are, are, are you serious, Professor Lincoln?" Yeah, like, uh, here's the here's the deal, right? Uh, I think the best way for you to learn about illusions is to go out and try them, see if they work. You know, uh. Think of it as like a lab. Isn't that dangerous? Well, it's illusions. It's not like they're real. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, the students all leave. Yeah. Uh, Deeran walks down to the hall to Homer uh, and he lets him know, hey, man, I'm taking your advice. I'm hitting the road. Whoa, hitting the road? I I didn't... Yeah, man, I'm... What do you mean you're hitting the road? I'm out of here, man. It's time to do something. You were right. Uh, you gave me the push that I needed, and I really appreciate it, man. Well, I mean, I, th I thought maybe you should get, like, a hobby or a side gig or something, yeah, you know, I'm, not like... I think you were right. You know, <laughs> you said get a side gig, and then I started thinking, and I was like, well, what if my side gig became my main gig, you know? And, like, so I'm just gonna... Well, I don't know if you... <laughs> maybe you should, like, try it before you quit your day job, you know what I mean? Uh, well, sure, but, like, let's be honest, Homer. My dad's the boss. I mean, yeah. So, like, if I have to come back here... Like, he's my dad, you know? He's bound to understand. Uh, all right. Sure. Okay. I mean, 
listen, I had a long talk with uh, a couple of friends and a guy who I used to look up to and now I think is kind of a dick, and I just think it's the right move. <laughs> uh, okay, Darren. Well, uh, good luck, man. <laughs> Thanks, Homer. Hey, um, I still think you're kind of a jock. <laughs> He's like, okay, uh, <laughs> you know, the whole, uh, evocation thing. Like there's other, there's other stuff out there, man. I mean, yeah, but you could pretty much just do all of it with evocation. You know what I mean? See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Hey, you know what? <laughs> uh, let's catch up when I'm back in town. Uh, <laughs> my normal dive right. is this one. Uh, and Darren like points him over to, uh, like, off the oh, yeah, oh yeah, you brought me over there once. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a shithole. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Deeran shuts the door behind him. Uh, and he heads home. Okay. Uh, and he sees Clara at the front door. Uh, he's like, hey, Clara, I got this one. Uh, and she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, master. She nods to you. Yeah, Deeran opens the door himself. Uh, he strolls in. Uh, he goes down to the kitchen real quick, and he's like, Harrods, man, uh, pack me a couple of Sammys for the road, because uh, I got to get out of here pretty quick. <laughs> he gives you the big thumbs up. Yeah, I'm doing it, man. I don't <laughs> care what happens anymore, you know? Good for you, lad. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, and he, like, is... He's pretty stoked right now, you know? Uh, and so he leaves the kitchen and he heads upstairs. And as he comes into the main foyer, um, who does he see? Both your mother and your father are standing uh, in the main foyer uh, having a conversation. When you walk in, they both turn to you and your mother says, what do you think you're doing? Oh, uh. Hey, I'm glad to run into you two uh, together. Uh, first off, Mom, I wanted to apologize because uh, I was late to dinner the other night. Uh, I'm sure it was great. What is this I have heard about you sending all of your students away for the rest of the semester? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm quitting. No, you're not. Yeah, no, it's too late. I like I already did it. Uh, I'm just gonna be all done, and you know I gotta follow like. I gotta follow the path that's in Dear front of me. Dear Lincoln, you will do nothing of the sort. This is ridiculous. Get your life together, return to the school, and return to these classes. This is unacceptable on every level. Yeah, you're right. It is. How your father could allow this is absurd to me. Well, that's the best part. Uh, he didn't. Dad, I'm sorry, I quit. Bye. Uh, and Deeran turns on his heels uh, and heads down the hall. Uh, he puts a hand out, hoping there's a bag of sandwiches as he walks by the <laughs> kitchen door. Yeah, all down the hall. Deeran, Deeran, both your mother and your father shouting to you as you go. Uh, and uh, like the most like quick glance like toss a bag uh so, uh so that there can be no implication as you uh as you head out uh and out of the the place and and i think uh you step outside uh what where where are the two deerens at right now yeah uh internal deeren is so proud uh because this is the moment that he's always wanted and could never do uh, this is the least stakes that he ever could have to like fake that conversation and like work through like, you know what? Uh, I'm taking control of my own shit. Uh, and so he is on top of the world. The sun is brighter. The birds are singing louder. The breeze is sweeter. Dear and Lincoln is alive. Uh, <laughs> external Dear is shitting himself <laughs> he is terrified and he has no idea how he is going to spend the next 44 hours and i think you take three steps out the door and everything goes black <laughs> mm -hmm.
Hey everyone, DM Anthony here, just reminding you that if you're enjoying the show, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, let people know, word of mouth, and you can support the show at patreon.com slash adventuring, or you can check out the shop at adventuringpod.com slash shop. Make sure you check the show notes and the website for all our social media, including our Discord, where you can come and hang out with some great people. We'll see you there. And until next week, I wish you nothing but critical success. Serious business.